<laughs> yeah. What's going? What's going on, people of YouTube? That boy Tree is here now. You know, I keep it real with you. This is like my fourth recording for um, my vlog attempt or be free. And let me just say, you know, I, I, some of you who would have already been following me know that I'm new on this uh, cam recording, cam recording, cam recording business. Um, and you know, I hope you find my vlogs entertaining. Um, the reason I'm going to leave a bit of space here because I want to put like you know maybe some screens, some images to keep you all even more entertained. You know what I'm saying? But when I watched my vlogs back, specifically the last uh, recording, I was in I was in the camera like this. You know what I mean? Because to me, I'm thinking when they remove these black borders up top you'll be able to see my whole face but it doesn't work like that so keep a bit of distance you know what I'm saying try and speak nice and loud and clear and let's have some fun so anyway <laughs> and I have really bad heartburn as well it's killing me so I was like this oh, time do me in so I'm not but you're not I'm gonna keep it real with you guys keep it professional keep it high quality keep it thorough but anyway E3 2013 still ongoing um, I had the silly idea yesterday of um, making a vlog after the main Microsoft part pure ignorance <laughs> it was about half hour long um, but then I knew that I weren't going to get any decent sleep last night after I got up so late yesterday so I just stayed up and watched this Sony conference and um, as we all know or as we all will find out for those who didn't watch the Sony part because it was like 2 o'clock in the morning for us guys in the UK um, they did end it with a bit of a one two blow to um, you know Microsoft's whole uh, you know pre-owned game stuff and at first I was like shit you know what I mean because for those who don't know you know I am a console gamer and I am a, like you know an Xbox fanboy so you could speak not any gay way you know what I mean I ain't no kid I just you know what I mean support some things that Microsoft does and obviously the 360 has been highly entertaining for me you know what I'm saying I have enjoyed my years with Xbox um, going back down the timeline though well I started with the Master System went to the SNES then the PlayStation 1 uh, PlayStation 2 and then I went from the PS2 to the 360 and it was a bit of um, funky transition you could say I don't know really I mean don't get me wrong I, I enjoy PlayStation games a lot um, and then when it came to the decision of buying a 360 or a, a PS3 the PS3 just didn't look as attractive to me I know that's not the be all and end all for buying your next generation console but it's just how I felt at the time and um, I wasn't particularly passionate about Sony over the Xbox you know what I'm saying um, because at the time as well I wasn't really con connected to the online world you know what I'm saying so I was just playing whatever the hell I wanted to play for fun 99% of it being single player stuff you know what I'm saying and then like a, friend, a few friends were like oh Xbox 360 Halo 3 you know, online this and that. So I was like, all right, and fair enough. You know, it, I think it was mainly the persuasion of friends that took me to the 360 side of things. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much how that panned out, really. Um, and then since then, I've never really, um, you know, I've, ne I've never wanted to buy a, a, a PS3 on top of a, a 360. You know what I'm saying? But it's been many years now since then and it's time to make 
you know, that that choice again. And well, obviously, I could just stay with my 360, but you want to keep up with the crowd. You want to be the first to experience these new incoming gaming experiences. You've got to be, you know, stepping it up and diving into the next generation with uh, the rest of the crowd. So, you know, um, all in all, I'll, I'll probably stick with the Xbox, to be fair. Um, don't get me wrong, as an Xbox fan, watching Sony announce the whole, whatever they want to call it, basic, basically they're, they're not going to mess with um, the whole um, pre-owned side of game. If you want to trade, if you buy a game, you can go to the shop, trade it in, you can sell it to a friend, you can do what you can basically do now. That's what they're doing. They're just they're just rolling how they're already rolling. You know what I mean. Whereas Microsoft is going down the path of um, I don't even really understand it hundred percent to be fair. It's, it's, it's like you buy a game. It's 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 a license to you. There's restrictions on what you can do with it after you've finished with it. You know what I'm saying. You can sell it to a friend who's been on your friends list for 30 days there's, there's some funky shit going on whatever the hell they're doing with it isn't really a crowd pleaser you know what I'm saying obviously there's the money side of things behind it and whatnot. but but whatever it is they're doing Sony won that war and, I'll, and from the things I'm seeing on the internet especially on Twitter 95% of people are saying um, Sony won the war of E3 um, and by the way, the crowd reacted at the press conference when Sony went in on the no, you don't need to constantly be online and, and all that kind of stuff. When they announced that, the crowd like tore the roof down. It was crazy. I felt like shit as a Microsoft supporter. So understandably, you know, I couldn't sleep last night. Um, but you know, thinking about it. Now, like I said, it's not the be all and end all. I mean, I, I think some people, some really dedicated fans of games, let's say, <coughs> excuse me, um, be, um, an Xbox fan and a buy Metal Gear Solid 5. You know what I mean? Some people are just like, look, you know, I, I'm happy to pay full price for um, this title because I support the developers, I support the publishers, I support the team behind the game. And, and that's my way of, of you know showing my appreciation you know what I'm saying um, some people don't necessarily trade in games anyway I know people who've got ridiculous backlogs that could date back to six or seven years ago some of the first games that came out on the 360 you know what I'm saying so it's not the be all and end all for anyone it is a bit it is a bit shit in a way for me personally, you know, I don't buy a lot of games new. I ain't gonna lie about it. Um, only like the big phenomenal titles. Um, and it, it's not obviously it is, it is, you know, trying to get the best deals at the time. I don't mind buying pre-owned, um, and I and I rent games as well. But my most previous rentals have been because of DLC and stuff. Let's say, like Battlefield 3, you know, one of my all time favourite multiplayer games, but eventually, you know, I, I'd kind of had to put the game down to, to play my other games that were waiting to be played, so I sold it. So I took it to the shop. Um, I can't remember exactly what I did, but I probably part exchanged it, maybe at CEX, maybe at games, uh, Game Station. Game itself, probably CX more than likely, and then obviously I can use that in store credit towards another pre owned game. So that whole system right there, you know, you know, look, it, I don't know what 100% what the details are, but it is going to be interesting to see how that whole thing works right there, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that's why <coughs> the Microsoft side of things was kind of a bit of a downer in that, in that term, in, in that way of thinking. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying, you know, I got rid of the game, and then out comes more DLC. So obviously, straight away, I'm not going to buy the game new again and pay 30, 40 quid for it. So this is where Love Film comes into um, the situation. And is Love Film still going to be ongoing for 
Xbox One games, you know what I'm saying? Um, and there's a lot of games I've done that for, re-renting titles for DLC. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm not playing the game after I've completed it and whatnot, I've had enough of it. I don't want it to just sit there on my shelf. You want to trade that in as soon as possible to get good value from it towards the next big game. You know what I'm saying? So it is a big thing for people. I mean, let's say I'm not. The the story with it is. Um, you can still trade your games in, but there's, there's just loads of funky, like, you know, t not necessarily terms and conditions, but <coughs> it's just not as clean cut as just trading your game in and, and getting store credit or money or whatever for it. it there's, there's loads of shit behind it. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description, actually, for a, a story that we put up on uh, True Achievements, which basically clears out all the rumours and gives you all the cold, hard facts as you need them. Um, I've read it, I've read the story myself like three or four times and it still just goes over my head with what the actual procedure is now. Um, but obviously in a nutshell it's not going to be as simple as just taking your copies of the shop and getting, you know, whatever the value is at the time. But from the Microsoft side of things anyway. Uh, don't get me wrong, they still do have time to maybe change the ideals, the systems. It won't be a good look doing that. I doubt they will, I mean, you got to think, they come out at this presentation and, and they say what they're going to do, so for them to go back on that now, just because of how Sony's reacted to it, it's not going to be a good look, you know what I'm saying, so it's going to be interesting to see what's going to be, if anything else is going to be announced in the upcoming months, um, but yeah, like I said, I'll probably still stick with the Xbox One side of things, um, but you just you just got to think about money in the long run. I mean, you know, as as a as a father, as a boyfriend, you know, I live I live in a house that isn't cheap to run. We all we all know it is. There's bills to pay. There's direct debits coming out my ass left, right, and centre. I've got a car. She's got a car. Things go wrong with your car. Things things go wrong in the house. Your refrigerator. You know how it is. So you you've always got to be stacking money to the side <laughs> you know what I'm saying so 40, 50, 60 quid a pop for new games and then not being able to do anything with these games or do anything that's going to really give you any value back it's, it does get you thinking you know what I'm saying um, and people you know people, some really defensive people might say oh well you know what did the publishers see back out of it type thing that, that doesn't necessarily you know get me thinking oh well yeah because it, it, it's like other things in life you, you buy a car you know and and eventually you, you know you don't buy that car to keep it for life to, to have it sit there doing nothing when you you, you go to buy another car I mean it's hard oh, it's doing me head in because it, I mean, I should have done my homework on it, really. You will be able to trade games in, but there's just... I can't remember what it was. There's, like, no no fee to the publishers or some shit like that. It's just... It, it, in a nutshell, This is what I mean, though. I mean, if I'm thinking like this now, and I've read this story three or four times over, how are other, other Microsoft fans feeling about the whole situation? Do people really 100% understand what the situation is because I watched Sony's thing once and that was clear as crystal you want to trade your game you go and trade your game you want to sell your game you go and sell your game with Microsoft it's like well oh, hold on what what can we do again you know what I mean I could just be being thick or maybe this is how the, the message from them is, is, is relaying to, to many people you know what I'm saying um, but don't get me wrong the conferences themselves moving off this whole trading game ish um, I think um, from the game's perspective I think a lot of for, it, it'll be more down to familiarari familiarity with game series that will keep the fans on the respective sides of the console war because for me obviously watching the Xbox the Microsoft one um, to get, I think Microsoft overall have more attractive games 
um, saw me there was nothing really outstanding that made me think oh my god Xbox out the window PS4 in you know what I'm saying the PS the PlayStation titles looked alright you know um, but obviously for them the main punch of their conference was the was the uh, pre-owned trading game business um, but for me it's like Xbox One the Xbox One games that were showcased did look pretty damn sweet um, and I probably will stay on the Xbox One side of things obviously um, I, I don't want to lose all my game score I don't want my game score to just you know kiss that goodbye and whatnot and the games did look good we had you know uh, the, well you're saying that there's three sixty games still to come that are going to be bangers I'm very interested in Splinter Cell Blacklist Lost Planet 3 uh, obviously GTA 5 you know what I'm saying so straight away I'm still going to be checking them out for the 360 side of things and then if I do buy an Xbox One I will, I will still have <coughs> I will still have my 360 because there's many games I've still to even start on the 360 side of things you know what I'm saying um, but you know I'm going to wrap it up for this part of the vlog um, in the second part I'll talk more um, about the games themselves, what we what we what games we did see at E3, um, but all in all, you know, there's still it's June now, so we, you know, there's still three August, September, yeah, still three and a bit months left until the Xbox One releases anyway. Um, eight quid more expensive than the PlayStation Four, um, and it's like. The, the both consoles were gabbing on about um, TV and sports extras and stuff because um, but the, the, the PS4 didn't necessarily have that many more bells and whistles than the Xbox One in my eyes to be fair um, because the, the Xbox One as well I think a big thing for the Xbox One Twitch TV um, cause, because I personally, as some of you will know from the previous videos, I, I don't really know how to get the whole Twitch TV thing working. You know what I mean? I've probably not got the right equipment for it. Um, so, for me personally, I mean, being able to broadcast to you guys who do watch me on YouTube and whatnot would be great because it's something I, I'd like to do, um, especially in terms of. You know, I'd look right now to be able to broadcast the races that I have on Grid 2. You know what I'm saying? Um, and obviously be able to give you the live commentary, me and the boys talking and, and shit like that. That would be really good. So you so you can watch and get that kind of feeling and excitement that we do. Because it's not the same when you record this stuff. You can't hear what I'm saying at the time. You can hardly hear what they're saying in party chat at the time. It's just not the same buzz. You know what I'm saying? So Twitch TV, if it's really going to be as easy as... Twitch TV is already there. Boom! Start streaming. That is that for me was a, a good plus point. <coughs> the upload studio um, was all right. It's another bonus. I am interested to see more details on that because, to me, the impressions I got was, yeah, it record. Let's say you have a, a, a really nice game on Battlefield for how much of the match is going to be recorded. Will it record the full match? Will the recording be editable? Um, will, you, will you be able to put commentary over it? Will you be able to put your own text over it? Does it upload direct to YouTube? Is it already a YouTube affiliated thing? To me, it just looked like it recorded clip, you upload it, and then it just kind of saves the game record, and then other gamers will be able to view your profile, maybe look at your videos tab. And, and go from there type thing you know what I'm saying because you've got to think as well for a lot of people it's going to be um, people are, are, are going to want to know how they can record from Xbox One gameplay and, and get it to YouTube because a lot of people obviously make good money off YouTube me personally uh, <laughs> I don't make amazing money on YouTube I make like you know being completely honest about, about well, I ain't gonna go into detail, that's not how we roll. Um, but the money to me isn't 
the be all and end all for all from my YouTube um, adventures. Um, it's just a nice little bonus for, for doing something I enjoy, you know what I mean? But I, I, I always do stuff I enjoy first. If I really want to make a killing out of YouTube, you'll be seeing all kinds of shit on my YouTube. Me making guides for games that I don't have any interest in and all that shit. I keep it fun. And then if I do make a little bit of scratch off it, that's nice, you know what I'm saying? Um, but obviously for other people who make, you know, good money off it, they're going to want to know how they can transfer these uploads and whatnot to YouTube, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I'm getting back into my ramble. I'm going to wrap this up. It's already 20 minutes long. Um, but I'm a lot happier with this recording than I was in my last one, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I hope you enjoyed the vlog. As I said in part two, we'll talk more about um, the games themselves. Um, you know, from both sides of uh, the conferences, because obviously for me there was the four main conferences: Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, and then Sony. So you know, I'll try and talk about all the games and my opinions on them and whatnot. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to. <laughs> Drop your likes and drop some comments as well. Let's 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 talk e free and get some discussions on the go and see what you guys thought of the presentations on what consoles will you be going for uh, in the future. And um, yeah, that'll be it. So I'll speak to you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.